Welcome, I'm Chef Wendy Brody from Art of Food with Your Town. And with me today is a dear friend and cheese expert, R. Kent Tory, but I'll call you Kent from now on, Perfect. as as always. That's really the easiest. Owner of the cheese shop and CEO of Meaning. Uh, meaning cheese eating enophile, correctly spelled with an O. It's just a little tongue in cheek on my it, title. It, it's darling. Thank it's you. terrific. Well, I can't. I, I mean, cheese is over 200 in the cheese shop. And for those that don't know, it's in the bottom level of the Carmel Plaza, at the right. bottom of Ocean Street, or the beginning, depending if you're right. heading to the ocean. Exactly. So Carmel Plaza is right there. Tiffany's is a perfect anchor to find. Ladies seem to always find Tiffany's. I wonder why. And we're just inside of the plaza, down on the first level. Anyway, the thing that is so special about the cheese shop and, of course, there's wine included in the cheese yes, shop, is. and you even have a little wine tasting bar. We do. But people get to actually try and get educated in that wonderful shop. And I know you've had some remodeling um, mm -hmm. that you've done, but it has just been the quintessential store in Carmel to go to. Oh, thank you, thank you. And I remember well over 30 years ago of going in, getting a baguette, getting cheese, and walking down to Ocean. And I, I know you said you've been responsible for some marriages and all kinds we of things. We have had some fun, and there is <laughs> supposedly some marriages and maybe some extra generations that have been created because of things that we have and what people would do when they enjoy bubbles and cheese and wines and spirits. So it's a lot of fun. And, it, and for us, it is about education. I mean, both my parents are retired teachers. Everything I've ever learned is that you never stop learning. Um, and my former bosses, John and Nancy McCormick, who started the business with their brothers, Michael and Neil, really gave me the impetus to continue staying in this food and wine business. They set it up. I've continued taking everything that they taught me and passing it on to the next generation and to our customers. And so we're very fortunate. We're very, very lucky. Um, knock on wood that uh, people still come to see us uh, 44 years now, 42 years in this location, Memorial Day. So a lot of fun. Well, ha happy anniversary of <laughs> on that. Much. And uh, speaking of wine, I see you have a split of well, champagne here. I, um, can't, I can't just come <laughs> empty-handed. Uh, Thank goodness say, for that. And, and, and for you, there's nothing better than bubbles. My lovely lady would always say that bubbles are a way to a girl's heart, and I've learned that quite well with her. And, of course, a few cheeses. And this is kind of very special, too. Um, this particular one, which if you don't mind my going ahead and open it up for us. Twist my arm. <laughs> this is um, from Delamotte uh, Champagne House in the Champagne region of France. And they are, of course, the um, house that also owns a very famous house called Salon, which is maybe one of the rarest uh, tete de cuvées ever. And one of the great, one of the cheeses that I have, uh, didn't do it as sighing as I should have, but one of the great cheeses that I brought here the general director, Didier Dupont, who's a friend of mine, was asked once what was his favorite uh, cheese to have, or food actually, to have with his champagnes. And he actually called me out in the middle of the uh, lecture with everybody and said, I don't know about you, Kent, but I like Parmigiano Reggiano. So I brought you some uh, wonderful Parmigiano Reggiano. But first, salute to you. Salute. It's salute. a pleasure, oh. absolutely. And always we smell and we enjoy. Mm -hmm. Bubble, they're, they're like liquid diamonds they going are, down. They are, they uh, are. And again, it's exquisite. This is a beautiful uh, Blanc de Blanc Champagne, which is elegant and crisp. And again, with this particular right. Parmigiano Reggiano, this is specifically called Vaque Rosso. And so this is the ancient original cows that produce the milk for this. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit richer than uh, the other types of cows, they have ancestrally, you know, this particular cow was used, and as the popularity of the cheese grew, the government allowed other Holsteins in Jersey, which produced more milk, 
would be the animals that could also produce milks for Reggiano. But this is the original Vaqueroso, a little bit richer, beautiful nutty. Yes, and there is thistle. that little crunch to it. Mm -hmm. um, and so the idea is that the salt against the acid of the wine really works and brings out more fruit flavors, so it's kind of nice. Of course, another little cheese that I did bring here for you, my dear, is a decadent triple creme, which I know you already oh, know. Oh, um, I, this my is, favorite. This one is Briat oh. Savarin, and of course, named for Jean Anton Briat Savarin, very famous gastronome. And uh, it is buttery, it is decadent, so I'm going to let you, my dear, uh, take some. We'll get the little bread here and we'll get this slathered on for you. So the idea with this particular cheese to go with the wine is the idea that now you have some butter fat and you have that richness and you have the acidity that wonderfully kind of counterbalances each other there and that's kind of the beauty. So from this, from cheese, from bread, from wine, we have conviviality. We have the beautiful relationships of where people can get together and gather. We're fortunate that you and I are in the business of food and wine. We have so many good friends, but this is something that our ancestors passed down to us, and we get to continue it on and uh, cheese it forward with the new generation. And when I've been in um, Europe, and where every village has their own cheese and version, exactly. and when we you go into your shop, you really begin to get that flair or feeling and begin to learn, as you said, education. Um, the importance of it is where these come from. Mm -hmm. I think you've got maps all over. And, we do, and, it, and, and it's the history behind it, and it's the location. And, and again, originally it was the local cheesemaker would trade, because the barter system was very mm -hmm. important back in those days without a monetary system. Uh, so the barter system was the cheesemaker would trade with the bread maker, and the bread maker would trade with the, the grape grower. And usually, again, the cheeses made in the villages where the wines were made, they would always be the perfect marriage together. But the fun thing is that your palate, my palate, the audience's palate, is completely different. And so there's no wrong answer. It's all about finding something that you like. Oh, exactly. Um, back to the champagne a second. Sure. You did that so magically. No popping corks whirling around. And I know there is a wonderful trick and secret that I think a lot of our audience uh, uh, would enjoy knowing, uh, uh, even how many times you untwist. Right. So again, again, the key here is that there is apparently six notches in the particular wire cage. But the idea for some of my friends who are very dear friends, uh, Master Sommelier Fred Dame, uh, who's one of our good yes, friends and yes. a local boy here also, would say is that you do want to make sure that once you've undone the wire, you should probably keep the wire cage still on the cork, but you don't want to let your hand slip off and let the cork fly out. You actually want to push down and keep the pressure and you lightly let the pressure out so that, as he would say, you want it to sigh like a woman. You yeah. don't want it to explode and be violently loud. <laughs> now, isn't the 45 degree angle Correct. kind of a pretty and important and that's the factor? Other thing. As, as I said, I was trying to hold the yes, bottle you in place did. and keep it at that 45 degree angle so that it doesn't go violently. And the other thing is that, at least in the world of service, I tried to do my best. The, the foil was twisting, but the idea is to keep the label forward so that the guests, when you're at a restaurant, and I used to work as a sommelier up at the Highlands Inn, um, you would want to present it so that they could still see the label and stuff. So it's a, it's it's an art, it's a trick uh, to learn how to do it, but it's not that hard. No, yeah, and you did it so beautifully. Yeah. Usually we hear a louder sigh, and yours was just so perfect and delicate, just the right tone. It's a small right bottle, <laughs> it's a small bottle, so just a little size. Less so. pressure. Exactly. Well, back to cheese and sure. Cheese 101. Okay. Um, I'll let you do the talking because you've got so much information. Well, there's so many different types of milk right. types. And, and so let's just start with the basics. Again, there's hard cheeses, there's soft cheeses, there's cheeses made that are young and fresh, there are cheeses that are aged. Um, the three principal milks are going to be your cow's milk, goat's milk, sheep's milk. Those are sort of the prevalent 
animals that are out there that most of the cheeses are made from, but every mammal gives milk. And so we do carry water buffalo milk cheeses too. Um, I have had the pleasure of having friends who traveled to Tibet, brought back some yak milk cheese for us. Oh. Uh, that was fun, unique and different. And I've heard in other cultures that uh, the, the tribes on the Hunza would have the horse milk uh, cheeses. So again, it has been around since the dawn of time when our ancestors learned how to domesticate animals. And the variety is endless. It's incredible. And just on the milks themselves, but then the art of blending and flavoring. It's sort of like how a chef would create a roux sauce. And what's the difference between one chef and another chef? It's how they color the roux sauce. So it's the little accents, the little herbs and the little spices that are used that make it unique and, and fun. So for us, the one thing I definitely encourage the audience to always know is that really cheese should be served at room temperature. Now the champagne should be served icy cold. <laughs> here, um, here. <laughs> absolutely, right. But um, the cheese needs to be at room temperature, much like wines from your cellar, red wines. You want them to breathe, you want them to come to room temperature. For us, a minimum of an hour at room temperature helps give full enjoyment to the cheeses. And then another thing that's always asked about us is that how do I care for it? How do I wrap it up and stuff? And, and what do I do if I don't finish this cheese? The easiest thing, especially for, for us here in the United States, is to go ahead and wrap it with some plastic wrap. And I would individually wrap each of these cheeses separately. Don't put them together in a Tupperware and have air. Air and moisture will create surface mold. Now that doesn't mean the cheese is bad. You can actually trim that surface mold off. But if you individually wrap the cheeses, you start to eliminate the amount of air and moisture that comes there. So that will help. Um, then just put them in the one of the drawers in the refrigerator, like the meat uh, drawer, uh -huh. and just slide them in there. But again, before you serve it to your friends and family, go ahead and pull the cheeses out at least an hour before and let them come up to room temperature. Um, I typically prefer to make the cheese platter in the morning, leave it out all day, so it's fully ripe and ready. Sometimes the guests come to the house and they're going, like, oh my lord, what the heck? <laughs> Died and crawled behind your refrigerator. Well, it's just the cheese What's that, that poise? <laughs> yeah, and that stretch very favorite cheese, too. That is a more aromatic one, yes. Uh, well, that is really helpful, and again, um, stressing when we've had our cheese too long and, or we haven't stored it properly and we get a little mold, don't throw your cheese away, just trim it exactly. off. Exactly, and, and that's kind of interesting because with regards to Parmigiano-Reggiano rind, for example, any chef that knows, and if I can, I'm going to just slightly turn the plate here and lift this oh, up yes. just a bit, but if you'll see the cheese here, the Reggiano rind right on the back side here, is darker and hardened. It's simply the inside of the cheese, but having been exposed to air longer, it's hardened to the point where you might not physically be able to eat it. Mm -hmm. But a chef would notch it and cut it into small little chunks, and the next time they do a soup or stew, they'll throw it into the soup or stew. It'll soften, it'll start to flavor that soup and stew. Oh, what a good idea. So you never waste cheese. And the rind on this particular triple creme is an edible rind, so it's beneficial. There are definitely some rinds you don't want to eat, a plastic rind, a paper rind, some yes. of the obvious things. But this is something that's pretty easy to do, deal with, and you can you know, get mileage out of cheeses. And there's so many different things that you can do. You can, cooking recipes, that's the great thing about not just eating cheese by itself, but l going to restaurants and seeing what chefs do with this as a main ingredient. Um, speaking of which, do you have any ideas for us besides putting it in the stew or maybe a soup? Well, or? I'll, I'll use what my lady did, yes. uh, my lovely lady Anne, the other night she had, um, we have a, a beautiful brie style cheese that has truffles in it. And she scooped all that creamy, gooey stuff out and we just put it in a saucepan and put it over fresh cooked pasta and it was oh. absolutely oh, my unbelievable. Goodness. That sounds oh, yes. like we've got to try it that. <laughs> decadent, rich, and oh, so good. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Now, along with the cheese shop that every one of your, uh, what, uh, my staff, my staff knows my the knowledge. Yeah. They are so good about sharing things. But you take 
the cheese shop on show to a lot of food and wine events all over we the do. country. We and do. maybe do. speak a little bit about well, that. I'm, again, I'm fortunate. Again, you and I have been in the business long enough, and I, I worked as a sommelier at some of these wonderful food and wine festivals. And then I would always bring cheeses for the after-hour parties for the chefs, for the winemakers, and uh, for the psalms. And then all of a sudden, one thing led to another, and somebody said, hey, why don't you put some cheese platters out? And I said, no. I'm going to do it. Let's do it right. Let's build a mini cheese shop. So I started bringing a thousand pounds of cheese and we we build a mini cheese shop there. And I think people are actually very surprised by this. And so I'm fortunate to now travel and do cheese and wine lectures at different festivals with Master Psalms Fred Dame and Jay Fletcher. At Big Sky Montana is going to happen in August for me. And then we travel to Hawaii Food and Wine Festival and bring our thousand pound uh, cheese display. Um, and of course, oh, the local festival, the Pebble Beach Festival. Yes, festival. yes. Uh, I thank my friend David Bernal for getting me uh, involved in this, and uh, we love doing it. We just had the 10th anniversary to, uh, just a month ago. I can't believe ago, it. And, uh, oh. So it, it's fortunate. Um, but it all comes from the fact that I do have great staff, and it goes from what I was taught and how I try to teach my staff to learn about the product to give the customer education. And again, that comes back to mom and dad, who are both retired teachers. So it, the circle of life kind of goes around me. I think really Elton John was right about me, not the animals. But, you know, <laughs> all stars here. Well, uh, I know that it has been so terrific. Just a quick word, uh, short, but how would you pair food and wine together? I know that's a loaded question, but champagne with the Reggiano. But right. For me, it's all about balance, and I think balance is truly the key. It's, it's if you have strong flavorful foods, have strong flavorful drinks. Anything can work together. Always trust your own palate, but balance is, I really, th I think, the key to it. Uh, again, strength for strength, mild for mild, and um, there's nothing wrong with acid in white wine like this or acid in red wine, and especially champagne, to go with something that's fattier and richer. Well, can't this you couldn't have said it more beautifully or shared it more beautifully thank you so much for joining us today My on pleasure. your town and this really is your town thank you Kent thank you Wendy appreciate it